Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Chris, aka the IT guy. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple CRUD operation by using MySQL, PHP, OOP, PDO, and other languages like HTML and CSS. Before you proceed to the making of the app, I'm going to show you a short demonstration on what you are going to make. And as you can see, I have my app finished here so as to show you on how it works. And uh, as you are seeing, I have one record here uh, that is now very simple. I want to show you concept uh, as a simple concept so as to be able to catch it very well. And I have my first name, my last name, my address, and the action. And as we are seeing, I have this record to show you. I can be able to add a new record or to create a new record. For example, let me say uh, Bob and for, for, for first name, let me put Aris. And for example, let me put New York. Uh, new York, it was suggesting me. And when I hit save, I will be able to save this data into my database. And you can see that I have now two entries. I can be able to edit this data. For example, I can uh, edit this. When I click on edit, I can be able to see the information before editing them. And I can go ahead and put, for example, Chris and update and after updating you can see now it's no longer a bob it's chris and i can be able to, to delete this record and you have to remain with one record it is very simple i i want to keep it very simple and i'm going to show you proper way of coding this and the approach that i'm going to use you can use it for your uh, endless or your lifetime way of coding and you can get a uh, more action in less time Without further ado, let's go ahead and see how we are going to proceed with this one. And I'm going to go ahead and close this column and I'm going to open the starter files. Of course, we cannot type each code here, but the logic code, I will try to make them one by one. In my starting file, I have uh, all this and uh, maybe I can open one of them. For example, all the data, you can see I have this dummy data to test on. When I press uh, delete or update, there's nothing happening. And for add new, you can see that I have this, but it is not working at all. We are going to make this work. To do that, of course, we need to have the uh, XAMPP installed and we have to start uh, the Apache server and the MySQL database, which is now for the MariaDB. And once they are turned on, you can go ahead and copy these files. And we're going to put them on the my uh, on the Apache server, which is located in C Zamp, docs and we're going to create a, a new folder here. Let's call this one uh, CRUD like this. And inside this, I can go ahead and paste this. And when I try to access them by using the server, I can be able to reach them. Let's open Chrome and put localhost. And I'm going to, for example, to access CRUD. When I press enter, you can see I, I get the index of the files on this folder. When I try to go on the all data, you can see that I have the same result. All right, let's proceed with now uh, the the logic of this. Uh, before I proceed to anything, we will have now to create the database. To create the database because we will need it to store our files and to have our app running like dynamic way. So to be to be able to insert some uh, new data and able to manipulate them, we will need database. And as I was saying, we will need what we call MariaDB to perform all this. And I'm going to jump in my VS code and I will have to drag and drop the folder that we made, which is called CRUD and i'm going to drag it here and once they ask me to trust the authors of course i trust the authors and you can see all the files that we were having and i'm going to go through them and you can see now it is now simple html that i use it in the collaboration of css to make it look good and a bit of buttons i used the bootstrap but it's not a big deal uh, I, I didn't intend to 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 work with uh, hard uh, data that's why i have to include this cdn for the bootstrap so to be able to to use it very easily in this app okay so I'm going to create the database. I prefer to create the database in a file, in one file. And after that, I can go, go ahead and copy and paste the codes that I did on here. It facilitates my work. So I'm going to type database.sql like this one. And we are going to create a database, uh, create database 
for example it's called this registration i like to call this registration and i'm going to create also the table create a table i'm going to call these users and after calling these users i can go ahead and uh, insert some parameters in here uh, i will start with the id which is now the int and i want to make this primary key to be able to identify uh, each record individually and i want to make it auto increment so as to be able to to name our data easily or to give them the numbers and i will have to put the first name uh, the first name like this one using the comma case and this one will be a, a worker so, so let's put for example 16 and we put not nar and i'm going to make also the last name and i'm going to make the vocal again and i'm going to put 60 and i will end with the address let's call this address and it will be also vocal and i'm going to put for example uh, uh let me put 50 and once i am done i can go ahead and put this uh, to end our database uh, declaration and after doing this you can go ahead and open our my zamp and on zamp you can go on my sql and go it is now written share and so let me, let's minimize this and once i am in share i will have to connect to the, the to the database and i will use my sql hyphen u which is stand for user and i'm going to go with loot i have forgot the space and once i am in mariadb uh i i was let's try to show databases and in this case i was having this registration in here and i made this for the sake of the demonstration i'm going to delete this so as to be able to have a clean workspace to be able to implement our codes on there i forgot the semicolon and i'm going to go ahead and drop a database registration and i will drop the database when you try to show the databases again you can see that there is no registration database in here and what i'm going to do i'm going to come and copy this copy and i'm going to paste this here you can see now when i try to show databases and i have now the registration again and i can go also and use that database that you created i use the registration database and once i am the registration when i do show tables uh, you see that there is no table that's why we're going to create this table which is now called the users and i'm going to go ahead and drag up to here and copy after copy i'm going to go ahead and paste and press enter and there is a problem on the line two so let's go and check it out uh to increment first name vocal not nar and so let's check cloud create table users uh let's see where there is a problem where it is it's highlighted auto increment i forgot to put primary key uh, like this i'm very sorry and I'm, i can go ahead and paste like this and once this is now okay i will be able to create that uh, the other table when i go and show tables again and i can be able to see the users when i try to describe the users you can see now the parameters that we set and you can see that this will be now the primary key and it is now the auto increment and while we are done setting up the database we can proceed with other stuffs and the other thing that we are going to do is now to rename our file as we are going to use the php and we're going to go for uh, sign up instead of making it html let's go ahead and make us a php and and for uh here too let's go and rename to php all right and once uh, i rename those files and they will be now start to behave like php files and i'm going to create the the file that will help me to connect to the database and this is now where it is now going to get fun because uh, the method that i'm going to show here is is very good and it can work everywhere you can need it okay i'm going to create this and i'm going to get database 
dot uh, php like this one and don't confuse it with the sql this is now the php file and i'm going to proceed with now writing some php codes here i'm going to open and close to avoid the uh, meeting with some errors and uh, i will have to make some super globals uh, that will help us to connect to the, to the database and every time we need to connect to the, to the database we will use this file and we can also use it to change between uh, the different databases uh, for uh, for example if you define the database type as my sql and you want to change it to postgres to other one you can use it here and i'm going to go ahead and i will I will check if it is not defined and I will put it if it is not defined and I will go ahead uh, I will define a DB type as now the super global or the global here now and if it is not defined I'm going to uh, uh, here it is not this I will do like this one I'm going to define the database type and it will be now these are now the constants db type i will have to put this uh, and i'm going to call this my sql all right because we are using the, the my sql database if you are using another database you can go ahead and use it on here and a uh, the flexibility of doing this is now you can change from one database to another one and you can be able to connect by using this file all right so I'm going to check again if now not defined. I'm going to to do this multiple times. No, not defined. For example, let's say DB host. I'm going to put DB host like this one. I'm going now to to define it. If it's not defined, define uh, now DB host as now the local host. All right. Use as loot. All right. Good. And you can get lead of this space to make our code clean. And we're going to def uh, to explain each thing here. And the first thing that we did is now we de defined the database type. Uh, we checked if it is not defined, then you defined it. And the define keyword. Uh, as you know, in PHP, we make this as a constant, which means uh, they can't be changed when they are accessed. All right. And the first database, uh, we define the dat database type as my SQL can change it for any uh, case or any reason according to the usage. And also we define the DB host as now the local host. The reason why we use the local host is, is because we are you're learning our project on the local. If you are having a server, you can go ahead and put the, uh, the other server name here. And the dat dat database name, we can go ahead and see that we used our registration as the database we created is called the registration. And the database password, you can see that there is no, no password and also the database user you can see now we are a uh, loot and here i made a mistake i have to put loot in here and i think now we are okay all right and once we are now done setting up the database we're going now to to go to create now a class and a class is the masterpiece that will help us also to to to, to manage our things and it is going to be super fun and it, is, it will be somehow challenging but i want you to go with me and i hope we will construct this class together and you will have the results that you can use in every project that you can use you can use the approach that you are going to use without further ado let's go ahead and create this file i'm going to call it sign up uh, for example sign up config you can call it the other name that you want it is not a uh, necessary to call it the the way i call this one but i want you i want to show you the concept on how to do this all right so once i created this file i can go ahead and press enter and it will bring it will, it will bring up this file as now the sign up config.php and like always let's open our php and close it right here to avoid errors of not closing it before we do anything we have to connect to, 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 to the database and i told you that to connect to, to the database we need to require the database file and i'm going to to do the require ones and i'm going to put database uh, dot php 
and after including the database php file i can go ahead and try to construct our class and i will put class i like this one and i will put i will call it sign up config to like this one and as i was saying there is no uh there is no reason for making this code like this one you can call it uh, however you want all right and after making the class we will need to set the parameters for this class and the parameters that we are going to need uh i think they will be we will need the id the first name the last name the address and the connection to the database all right so we are going to make uh, the private uh, we're going to make the private and i'm going to cut this private uh, for example uh, this id like this one and i will do the same for the first name Uh, db uh, cnx that's how i like to call this one the variables i used here the variable names you can go ahead and choose the the other ones that you prefer to use but in this case i used uh, this approach if you want to go like this there's no problem you can go like this one okay once we are done setting up the parameters you can see that there is no parameter left uh we will need the id we need the first name we need the last name we need the address and the connection to the database and the other thing that we're going to do is now to uh, construct uh, the this this variable by using the constructor and to do that we have to put public uh, function like this one and with this public function i will put now uh, construct here i used uh, double underscores and i'm going to type construct like this and after typing the construct i'm going to initialize all the variables and i will start by id i will initialize id as zero and i will initialize the first name uh, as now the empty string and i will initialize the last name and once i am now done constructing our variable we are not done yet uh so i'm going to go ahead and open like this and this is now we are going to construct our variable and by using this keyword that is called this and what this do it will point to this class and to try to uh to breed our variable and i'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to proceed with all this. I will use this ID. This is now the uh, the name that to the, the approach that we use to do this. And I'm going to point to the uh, ID like this. And I'm going to do the same for this um, first name. And now we are done constructing our variables. And we're in the constructor. We can also try to connect to the database. And we are going to use the PDO connection and we will create the PDO class. Uh, we will use the PDO class and we are not going to create it. We will use the PDO class to connect to the database, but we are going to create the uh, PDO object. To make this uh, simple and errorless, uh, I, I tried to to make this line of code but i'm going to explain on how it, it it works and i'm going to paste it here and you can see that it will also point to this connection like this one and it will be equal to new pdo and this will create a new pdo uh, object and to will point this database type that we, we pre-created here and it will be also it will put host as now the local host uh, here it will put the database name that we specified on here it will also uh, require the database user that we created on here and it will also uh, require to put the database password and there will be this now pdo class and the reason why we use this one to also uh, be used to fetch the associative array all right if you don't know the, uh, how pdo works there is uh, some guidance that you can go ahead and see all the pdo classes that you can use all right and once we are now done constructing our variables and we we were able to establish the connection to the database it's now time to go ahead and uh, go with further processes uh, for making this class complete um, we are now uh, in the middle of creating this i'm going to go ahead and uh, 
do what we call the setters and getters. What the setters and the getters do, they, will, they try to initialize the variables and after initializing them, we can get them as now the new returns and the variables can be used uh, in other processes. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how now this is now done. To do that, we, we, we create the, the setters and the getters as also the function. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put public function. Uh, this is now public function. I will, I, will, I will try by setting set ID, for example. And we have to put uh, the ID as now the argument. And I will, I will have now to assign this and ID. Uh, it will be now to the variable of the ID, all right? And after now, this is now how we set a variable. And after setting the variable, we have to get also the variable. This is now what we call a setter, and I'm going to to go ahead with the getter. To, to make the getter, we can go ahead and make also the function for get ID. And in this case, it will not uh, have any parameter inside. But instead, it will be looking like this one. And after we, we, we will try to return the variable on the set that we did. And to do that, we will use this. And uh, uh, it will use, we will use the return keyword. And to return this. And to return the ID. Right. I hope you get the point on how this works. First of all, we set this ID as this variable ID. And after we are going to get the ID as now this ID. All right, good. We're going to do uh, for a couple of the variables and uh, to make this a video very short, I'm going to speed up and I'm going to, to work on this one. All right, and once we are done now uh, making our setters and getters, you can see now we set our ID and you get the ID, we set the first name and you get the first name and we set the address and also we were able to get this one. And the next step now is to make the insert function. And to make the insert function, for uh, we proceed also with the public function insert uh, data. That's how I'm going to call this. And after calling this function, this is now where the fun begins. Because this is where now we are going to try to insert the data in our database. To make this a uh, more list, um, to make this very simple, we're going to use the try. Uh, like this one. Let's go ahead and do like this one. We are going to try. And after trying here by using, uh, we're going to connect it by using the try and the catch so as to be able to catch the errors and to be able to uh, continue with the, the execution of the other codes. All right. So I'm going to, where we are using the PDO, we, are, we need to use the prepared statements. To, pre to use the prepared, st prepared statement, it will really help us to avoid many things that uh, are very harmful to our applications. For example, to uh, prevent the SQL injections that can happen in our applications. And we're going to use the same approach but while we are going to insert the data. So this is now how it is done. We are going to proceed with uh, the connection of to the database. We uh, will have to do this dbcnx as now the variable that we set on here, dbcnx, like this one. And after we do this, we, we, we will also point to the prepare state to the prepare statement and we put the bracket. And inside here, this is now where we will put our query on how to insert the data and we will insert into uh users this is now the name of the table and i will have to specify the first name and i will have to specify the last name and i have to specify also the address as you remember the the id now is a auto increment we don't need to include it in here and after we do that we'll have to specify also the values and i want to you to show i want to show you how now we do this and on the values we have to count uh, the amount of the arguments that i'm going that are going to go in the database and for example this is i uh, will put this uh, uh, ex uh this question mark for the first parameter the second parameter and for the uh, 
third parameter like this one and once you are done and you double check that you made any no you made no error you can go ahead and close like this and once this is done you can double check to see if now the query is okay and as you are seeing we, we, uh, we write inside two users first name last name address values like this one and once you are done you can go ahead and close like that all right and uh, after making that statement you can go ahead also and execute it so as to be able to initialize the value in that uh, statement and i'm going to go and uh, choose this and i will point to uh, execute and we are going to execute execute this we need to pass the variables in here so as to be able to to make them work the way we need and to do that i'm going to go ahead and uh, i will put uh, this and i'm going to point to the first variable and to, uh, this and i'm going to point to the uh first name first name and there we go and once you are doing once you are done doing this you can go ahead and complete the line and you can see that we were now able to set all this and you can see that the, we try to execute the first name parameter the last name parameter and the address and this it they, they will come from this getters and setters and i will see i will show you how now to do this and we have now also to include the message for the the completion of inserting this i like to use the javascript to do this i'm going to call a simple script on here and after this uh, as we made it the try we have to surround it with now the catch and the catch will be here we we'll catch the exception and uh, so let's try to catch the exception All right, and once this is now complete, I forgot the semicolon here. All right, uh, once this is now, this is now the first, this is now the first method that we did for inserting the data. Let's try to do another method for now fetching the data from the database. And to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create a new public uh, function. And I'm going to kill call this fetch or like this you can call it uh, however you want and the same same will be for uh, it will be now the same approach we we'll use also the statement and it will be equal to uh, this and we have also to point to the connection to the database the bcnx okay after doing this we can go ahead and also try to catch the the error and we are going to go and also set another one so let's see where this bracket now is coming from let's try to delete it i hope the closing one is this for the class all right so uh, we're going to create a new function for the uh, if you want to fetch one for example if you want to manipulate we need to fetch one data at a time and i'm going to make a function for that and like i was saying when you try to breed this uh, cross uh, very uh, uh, gentry and you pay attention to what you are doing there is no other thing that you will need uh, you will need to always come and modify some parameters on here and it can facilitate your work as i was saying and to to select one also we will use the statement like always and i'm going to point to uh, this and i'll have to connect to the database dbcnx put my query here select this one like this one i hope it's now like this and once i'm done i can go ahead and execute this statement and i'm going to go ahead and execute execute and once i will be uh, i will be needing to ex execute the id here i will have to execute it on here too so to do that uh, so let's try to do this to do that i will really have to point to the id here and to make this we we'll use also this keyword and i'm going to do id all right 
I hope this is it. Go ahead and close this. And once I do that, you can go ahead and try now to, to fetch or all right, after that, doing that one, uh, we did the without uh, surrounding with the try and the catch. Uh, but let's try to do this on here. And what we are going to do is to cut this bracket and we have to put it here. And after doing this, I can go ahead and also use the catch as uh, well. And All right. So far so good, we are now also able to to create another function that we have to check, uh, to check for one, to fetch one data from our database. And there are two other functions that we may need to make. For example, we need to make the, the update function. To do that, I'm going to, to do like public function update. And after doing that, I can go ahead and uh, I put some parameters in here. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and try. And after making the try, I, I will go ahead and uh, do the statement. And we have to do the same like we did this and the connection. And also prepare. And we have to put my uh, SQL query here, update, uh, set. Uh, users, so I set first name. I uh, forget to put the table name. Users, set first name uh, as uh, first name to be equal to this press holder ID is equal to the selected ID. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and see why. Uh, where, uh, let's see, address okay. This is where I messed up. All right, good. And after doing that, you can go ahead also and uh, execute the statement. While we are editing or we are updating, we have to use the same for the uh, for the insert, and we have to add the ID to make it uh, work. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So as to avoid wasting time and on execute, we have to put all these parameters and we have to add another parameter for the ID uh, because it is the one that we will be using to, to change this. And that's the reason why we need to make this as a unique uh, uh, identifier for the database. And if we want to identify any law, you can use the ID to point to it. To it. Okay. After doing this, let's define this one. The advantage of copy paste is this, right? And um, after doing this, you can also uh, go ahead and try to surround this. Try with the with its catch. Good. Now we are now further to finishing constructing our class. We're going to go to for the last method that is now for the deletion or for the delete. To do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the same. For example, I'm going to do public uh, function. And after doing that, I can go ahead and uh, try also to so now this one, I'm going to do the statement again. Equal to uh, these and connect to the database. And I'm going to delete from users where ID equal to the selected ID. And after doing that, you can go ahead. Let's see what is now giving me the error. Uh, delete. All right, there's no error. And after doing that, you can go ahead and execute this. And after executing the ID, we have also to return our. I have to go ahead and. Uh, yeah, now you are close. All right, this is now how we are going to do this. And finally, we have to catch the error. 
now we are now done constructing our class i hope uh, there is uh, less alas i can't say there is no ela because in programming other things are possible if we meet with alas we will come back and check where we, can, where we made an ela okay so after doing this one you can go ahead and try to handle now our form data to handle that one we will come to the uh, sign up form and we have also to check if everything is good we can go ahead and check for the form action we will set the action for this form and the method uh, method it will be equal to post and the action i'm going to 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 make another file that will handle the action for example let me call this sign up uh, process uh, sign up process it's okay for me uh, okay sign up process uh, that's php all right after doing that now what we did here we are saying that when you submit our form it will, it will be it will call this and after calling this it will also use the post method and after doing that you can go ahead and also uh, check on the submit you can see now this is now the save but the require to or add also the name and it is now uh, for example let me say save there's no problem i can call it save and let's check for the name of the these labels you can see the input here the name is address and also for the last name the name is now the last name and for the uh, first name it's now the first name okay so we're going to create this file that we record and i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call this sign uh, sign up uh, process.php like this and once we are in this file we can go ahead and try to i uh, to initialize our variables on here so to do that um uh, to do that we are going to also open the php tag like this one and close this after doing that we are going to set the if is set we are going to set other parameters here the first thing that we need to do is to require the class that we pre-created. So we have to, to require once and we're going to, to require this class to code sign up config.php. And after doing that, you can go ahead and complete our line of code. And after initializing the class, we need to make an, a, an object. So for example, let me call this uh, uh, SC as the object that I created and I will use the new keyword to create a new object from that class and I'm going to call this class uh, config All right and I will do like this one and this there is no zero in there okay after making a new object from that class I can also uh, try to initialize all the variable by using this object that you created and we can do this and i'm going to set uh, the first name it be now from the post and then we have to choose the first name and this will uh, be repeated so i'm going to copy and i will paste and change some parameters I need I think we need it two times that's why I copied two times and they have to put and where we are in here I'm going to 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 explain what I did here first of all I created this object after creating the object that point to this class I'm go I am occurring these parameters in the class and I'm initializing those with the parameters from the post when you remember uh, that in the class we used to set the getters and setters, uh, this is now where we will be able to set our first name, right? And we get it and we have to set the address and we have to set also the last name. That I think we forgot, but there's no problem. We can do it like here. We set the, first, the ID, the first name, but we forgot to set the last name. But it's pretty much the same thing. You can go ahead and uh, change 
this asset uh, last all right good this is where there was an error and i hope we are good okay and after doing that uh, we will think that we will have to set our first name and to try to take the first name from the form and to be initialized into this class and to do the same for the last name and for address and when you take a closer look after setting all these variables this is now where we will call them and after they are set and gated they will be submitted uh, by this or they can be manipulated using this one you can see this is very very f uh, useful and it is so um, somehow fun on how we can proceed with this one okay so i'm going to go ahead and uh, call also the insert method and to do that i'm going to also point to our object and i'm going to go and insert data and after calling this insert data it will try to to do uh, the above things that we we set and to try to call the insert data method that we did here you can see that now it will we try to do all this uh, we specified on here so uh, for that, we can go ahead and proceed with the testing. But before testing, I can go ahead and copy this message. And I'm going to, to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in here. And after doing this, we can give it a go and give it a test to see if it works. And I'm going to, uh, for example, let me open my database uh, to do like this one. My SQL, you let use registration and select you can see that i have an empty set we're going to try to add some data and we will see if it will work to do that i'm going to go on my um on my local host and i'm going to uh to go on sign up dot php and i'm in here i'm going to try to insert some data for example let me say chris and tian and for example let me choose new york and we're trying to save you can see that there are some errors and there is uh, some error on the sign up config online 19 let's see where it is now getting us the error on 919 it is now the uh, db password let's see where now it is and db password uh, let's see you see the name here we messed up all right good so let's try again and you put for example chris and here and here save you can see now it is telling me that data is saved successfully thanks god and to return the location that we specified and it is still containing dummy data so don't get it twisted so i'm going to check by using the uh, this console and you can see that we were able to insert our data and our insert now is successful all right good isn't that cool i hope it is um i'm happy that it, it, it worked on the second time <laughs> sometimes it works on the 10th or on the 11th uh, time but in this case to work it on the first time we can go ahead and add a, a new look a new record for example let me call uh tina and martin and i'm going to call for example kansas and there you go now we are able to save our data and when you try to see you can see now you have the id of one and uh, chris for the id of two we have tina great so we're going to continue with now on on how to fetch the data from the database all right so we're going to continue with uh, now fetching our data from the database and uh, to do that you can use this old data that's where now it contains the table on where it can uh, give us our data and when you try a closer look you will see that it is a simple table which contains this dummy data that we insert that we inserted in here so as to make this not empty uh, we are going to make this dynamic 
and to do that we are going to to use the approach that i'm going to show you and where we are in here we can go ahead and try to create um to add some php file here open and close our php after doing that one i will have also to call this a uh, sign up config because it is now the file that contain all, all our methods after i do that i'm going to create the object and i'm going to call this data and data it will be to new sign up config and this will be the object from uh, this class and i'm going also to to call to make another variable for example i'm going to call this or and it will have to go on this object and this object will point to the uh that class and it will point to the function that we created that is called fetch or after doing that you can see that we created uh, this object from this class after creating the object from this class, it will go in this class and it will call this function that we made that is called fetch or. And in this class, when you go and you, you see on fetch or, you can see that we are going to select all from users. And I hope it is now like this. And after, we are going to test if it will work. And we, after doing this one, now it's time now to see on how we can call the variables uh, in here. So to do that, we can uh, go ahead and try to do this on here after the this. I think we can do it here uh, after, after this. So let's try to do it here because that's where we have this one will be static but we are going to add now the dynamic effect uh, for the fetching of data we we'll use the for each to fetch because it's the, the data that, that we will be seeing from the database will come as an array and it will have to use for each to to remove them uh, to, to return them as the arrays and you will have to manipulate the way i'm going to show you okay now we have to point to the or for each or because the or it was the one that is pointing to the fetch or method and it will return the array okay and i'm going to use as and i'm going to separate from this key and i will put this uh, as now a var these are now the these are the the, the parameters or the names that I, I imposed myself you can go ahead and choose whatever you like and guess what if we go to put some php here i'm going to use the short form like this and after doing this one i'm going to open this and after opening this i'm going to uh, let me just go ahead and close this php and so uh, wait to see what i'm going to do in here instead of having this as a dummy data we're going to call the data from this key value pair and to do this i'm going to go ahead and go in here and remove this pillar and after removing the pillar i will have to call this uh, i will have to call this php like this all right after doing that, I can go ahead and close my PHP like this one. And I hope you are getting the idea on how I'm doing this. Let me delete this. We close it later on. I'm trying to open the PHP and I'm going to set the variable on here. And I will set this to the first name. And after doing that, I will have to close this one. All right, good. We can use the same approach to call other values in here. So uh, to do that, I'm going to go and try to copy and paste and paste again and after doing that you can see that we are trying to call our values by using this method so we are going to give it a test and see if it will work mm, i hope it will but before we continue i'm going to test uh, i'm going to add this, for example another for uh, uh, the action uh action for example let me leave this as blank uh table data and i'm going to leave this as blank but we, we have to put something later on 
and after doing that you can go ahead and try to balance our uh, brackets that we opened for example we opened a bracket on here we need to balance it to do that i'm going to do outside of this because that's where our php code is and i'm going to do like this and they will have to balance uh, let me use the short form and they will have to balance my bracket like this and they will have to close this and the, this bracket is now closed on here and the all, all the parameters are inside this so we're going to give this a save and we have to check if it will work and if it will we will be lucky enough so let's go ahead and refresh all right good now it worked in the first place you can see that you have the place you have the tina and you has the, you have the uh, name the last name in the new york and we can see that on the action you have nothing and that's where we are going to to add some buttons and the the, the buttons that we help us to manipulate our data the first button that we're going to use, we are going to use it as a link and I'm going to make this as a link and I'm going to give it a class of uh, uh, BTN and this is where I use the bootstrap to call these buttons and I'm going to call BTN danger because now it is danger to delete and I will put after I will put the hlaf later on we we'll see that when we are going to manipulate the data uh, but i'm doing this in, in for the demonstration purposes only after i do that i can go ahead and put for example delete and after doing the delete and i'm going to close the a okay so let's give it a save and see if it worked all right good it worked it's pretty cool and I'm going to add the same button for the edit. So I'm going to copy. I copied a copy from here, and they will be in the same. Uh, they will be in the same low here. Okay, good. So we have to change for a bit. Uh, instead of being the delete, can be like uh, edit. And for example, I'm going to call this button button warning good they are now good to go you can see that they are now dif different you can see that we can able to you can be able to delete and to edit and they point on this because we, we are not yet uh, uh, configured them to do what they uh, were created to do okay so we are going also now to implement the deletion of the data and to perform the deletion of the data we will have to change this button for a little bit for this delete button or this delete uh, uh, anchor for a little bit and what i'm going to do is now to add some other things on here and to do that we will have to to do that i'm going to create a new file here and i'm going to call this delete right after making this delete.php we can go ahead and add some uh, parameters in this delete and some the parameters that we need to use to use in this delete are very simple you can go ahead and call php and inside here we can also point to our class uh sign up doing that this is now where it is going to get interesting i'm going to call this for example let me call this liquid and it will be a uh, new and after i will have to check now if is it uh, now to in here we no longer need to use the post because we are going to delete we use the get method because that will be the one that will help us to get the data from the database and in this case so we delete by id and also we we'll use and uh this is not and and is set and is set to get and you have to choose the request i will show you how to do okay we will have also to to do something here this is not where we do this we we'll have to say if get uh if if get id and is set to get this all right we will go ahead and perform something here okay so we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, let's see where there is an error. 
All right, so let's write for other thing. If I'm going to check for the liquid, and here we're going to go on the if gate of that liquid that we will set, and we will check if it will be equal to the string delete. And after we check, we can go ahead and do something here. To do that, I'm going to call that object that you created, and I'm going to set the ID of uh, uh, the ID that we will we'll use to delete our data, and we will have to get that ID, and we have to use the get again. Targeting that ID, you can go ahead and call the delete method that you created on our class. All right. After doing that, you can go ahead and also uh, 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 let me copy the message for the successful and I'm going to copy it from here. And I'm going to copy uh, to paste it here and I'm going to data delete it. All right. Good. And after doing this, uh, this is not C. HO, it is echo. We're going to go ahead and fix this line of code. We are going to see where there is an issue again. And so we're going to check if we set to get ID. All right, good. And it was this blockage that was causing these measles. And I hope we are now good to go. And after proceeding like this one, I'm going to, to show you the reason why I did this. And because uh, on the old data, we will need to modify the button for a little bit to get the ID of this and to set the request as a delete. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one. And the, in that case, I will be able now to explain to you other things here. OK, so I'm going to call this as now the uh, delete. And after calling the delete.php, I will have to put this and I put ID echo. And after putting the ID echo, and we have to open this like this short form format echo. And we have to put also that variable that uh, we use to get the result from the database. And we have to put the ID to get the ID of that. After getting the ID, now we can also set the request. Let me close, let me close this. Uh, I don't think it's here. Let me close it here. And then we have to add also the request as now the delete. All right, good, like this one. I hope it is like this one. And let's see where we made an error again. We set the delete, this one, and this one. So let's see now where there is a problem. To be on H leaf, it ends on here, and uh, the problem may be to here. All right, let's save. All right, and you can see now the problem is gone. We forgot to close this, and once we are proceeding like this one, let's give it a test. And the reason why we are doing this is to get the ID of this item, and you can call this delete with the that ID uh, attached to it. So we're going to see if it will work or not, and we will see the error that it will give us. Let's go ahead and the flash, try to delete this. Uh, it said that the data deleted successfully. When you try to see that you, um, the data now now is completely deleted, and it was now it worked on the first place, which is now very good to us. You can see now I have one. If I try to delete uh, this again, you can see now we have an empty. We can go ahead and. Um, uh, let's change this direction for the old data. It was still pointing to the HTML, but you can change as the PHP. And in that case, we can be able to refresh here, we can be able to point to our sign up. And I'm going to add some data here. Uh, Max, for example, let me call. Uh, uh, for example, let me call Kansas again, Kansas City, and I'm going to save. After saving, you can have now this one record. Okay. Now we are approaching the end of this video, and uh, I'm going to make the one one final approach, which is now for the edit or for the update. 
and to do that also we would have to make another file and we call this one edit and what this will do it will try to edit our data and to make this uh, very simple i'm going to reuse some of the codes for example for the sign up i'm going to reuse some of these codes and we have to change them uh, a little bit and to do that i'm going to copy this and i will have to paste on my edit paste here leave this as the same and we did this placeholder because we don't we don't want it at all and placeholder too i'm going to delete this and for this and also for the submit value to be update and for this name we call it edit okay and we are going to use this code so as to be able to edit to edit our data and where i'm in here i'm going to do the same approach and i'm going to open my php like this and after opening the php i'm going to call my class as now the sign up config sign up config dot php all right okay after calling that one i'm going to make an object from that i'm going to call it data and i'm going to create a new object any object from the sign up config uh, sign up config all right good uh for the sign up config i'm going to uh, to create a new variable and call this id and i'm going to get the id uh get and i'm going to get the id the reason we need to get the id this is the id that holds all the things that we need and and i'm going to call my data after calling the data and i'm going to set this id set id as now this variable id that we got okay after doing that you are going to also let me let me uh remove this again let me move this the direction of this i think the action it will be now on this form so i'm going to do like this okay and after doing this uh, let me go ahead and close the php as well as to never bring the errors on the html files and after doing this i'm going to check if now is set uh, set uh, to uh, again this will be a post some errors here can go and do like this and i'm going to also initialize the data like we used to do where we are we're setting this set first uh, name a first name like this we want to set this from the that one and to be uh it will be from the post yeah it will be from the post and from the post we choose the first name that it will be on there and this will be pretty much the same that's why i'm going to copy this address right so give it a save and try to make your code cleaner and after doing that one we can double check to see if there is no thing that is now uh, not set okay so i'm going to go again and try to um, to call the method and i'm going to echo uh, this method and I'm, I'm going to call this object and i'm going to, to call this uh, update after doing this you can also go ahead and uh, use the message that you used to use all right edit here and data edited right to make the data appear on our form as we are we, we, we are we are going to edit them we will use another approach so as to get the data on the form and i'm going to make for example let me call this lay code all right it will be now this data and i have to point to the method that is called now fetch 
one all right and after pointing to that one i will have to return uh, the the variable for example let me call this var as now the the first the first variable from the the record that we did that's why we we have to use the index of zero because we are fetching the one variable only okay i hope you got the point okay and after doing that uh, we can also go in our our uh, form and you can see on where we can set the values and on the first name we can go ahead and set the value that we hold so as to be able to um, to get the current value that was on there and we use the php to get the value and then we have to echo the value that we set on here it was now this and i will have to point to the database for the first name okay and after doing this you can go ahead and uh, do this and create and close our php and it will be like that one and you can copy this value and the last name now like we did on the delete we also need to change something something on the edit on all data and on the edit we need to add something as uh, so well as to make it work to do that we need also to add the the same approach that we, we used on delete and we will really have to, to copy this up to here right because there is no request that we need and on the and the edit you can go ahead on the url for the edit you can go ahead and put this and remember to put like edit and remove this and what you will do to will try to go with this and to choose that i this and to be able to edit that one so let's give it a save and check if it will work or not and when you come back to our record here and go on edit you can see that there is now a problem on the edit php is line 17 let's see where we messed up and you see we're missing this and you can see that it is not returning the things like we expected so let's go ahead and see where there is a problem I try <laughs> to fix this a uh, lot quick let's see where there is an error let me check for the variables and all right this is now where there is a problem and okay and this that made this edit and here now let's see edit again okay go again when you try to go again and refresh and when you go on edit it will have to pour this data and you can put for example a max and when you press on update it will be edited and you can see now it is now successfully edited all right this was now a long video but i hope you got something and you got the idea on how to make a crud operation by using this method and this will work wherever you will need to use uh, the crud operations and they will be used everywhere when you are developing a web app or a mobile app you can use this approach to do that and this marked the end of my video i hope you guys will like this video and if you did go ahead and show it by pressing the like button and if you are coming on the channel for the first time and you find it interesting go ahead and subscribe and uh, from now on until next time i will see you guys in the next one peace